Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to show y'all how to use a tool called a widget um, to make <laughs> sorry I'm so professional and prepared um, to make these cute little wire wrapped hammered thingies um, so let's get started so for this project, we have quite a few different tools and materials that you can choose from. The main component is the wig jig, or it's basically, you can see it's a little piece of pegboard. This is a plastic version with little plastic pegs, which is great for on the go because it's quite light. Like um, if you're taking it to craft shows or if you have like a travel bag, um, I really recommend that one. I prefer this one because it's metal. Um, and I'm prone to, um, sometimes I'll get carried away and like hammer on it and stuff. And so I, I can be really hard on plastic, but I really like this with its metal pegs. They have these little rubber backs that go through. I store the extra pegs in just a little container. Um, but for the most part, I almost store them on the board in the designs that I use most often. So with the wig jig, they actually give you some different... Um, blank templates that you can draw out and they have a couple of designs that you can follow along with. Um, there's a flower and a snake and then today I'm actually going to show you a modification on the yoke as what they call it. So here you can see that's their layout and they have you start at one end and kind of loop-de-loo around and that's really great and there are a lot of different ways that you can build on these different designs that they provide to explore your creativity and so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little piece here. Now I make this with the pegboard set up in this design and you can see by hammering it you know it's kind of moved itself around a bit but we're going to start and you could use a thinner gauge wire I wouldn't if you're going to hammer it I don't recommend anything thinner than an 18 gauge um, for this one, I'm using a 16 gauge dead soft anodized aluminum because I really wanted to see how well the anodizing held up to being hammered and it held up pretty okay. So I use about six inches. You can give yourself a little bit more of a tail to work with if um, you don't feel quite confident in your wire wrapping skills. And so the different other tools that I'm going to be using uh, other than the wig jig, are flush cutters. Whenever I'm doing hammered pieces like this, I'm very mindful about whether I'm cutting with the flush side or with the pinched side, because those can give you really different effects. I'm using some round nose pliers. My favorite go-to bent nose pliers, just for everything. Some nylon jaw pliers, if you just want to squeeze hard in it. And then here I also have a five pound anvil and a nice heavy hammer. I've found I get a much better effect using a heavier hammer than what I did with a lighter hammer. And also this one's older and has quite a bit of, you know, like wobble to it and stuff. So, um, and also I have a nylon side head and a brass head here on this hammer. So to begin, let me get zoomed in for you so you can see. I'm going to try to show you again. Yeah, there you can see the peg placement. It may even be helpful to see from the back. Because incorporating different sizes of pegs can really give you some nice effects too. So you can see I just kind of put it in at a diagonal like that. There it is again from the front. Nice and secure little pegs. I'm using one of the smallest, one of the second to smallest, and then like the second to biggest um, pegs. Like I think they only really give you like four sizes. And so now we have our 16 gauge wire, six inches of it. I'm gonna find round about the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to bring that around this center loop, bringing it in between 
the other pegs and I'm going to bend one side off in one direction and one side off whoop, in the other direction. Excuse me. And you could have it be quite snug, perfectly tight, just however you like. I don't mind a little bit of wiggle room there. And now I'm going to bring it around and laying the wire down, I'm then just twisting it around that peg and then I'm going to twist this one around that peg. And I try to keep it nice and tight and snug. Also, I absolutely love this tool for whenever you are creating duplicates. You know, if you want to make a matching set of earrings, this tool will come in really handy. Now also something to keep an eye out for is sometimes if your backs get loose, See how that kind of separated? Your wire might get underneath it, so be mindful that you have a nice, secure, snug peg. So now I'm going to bring this one around. I'm just bringing it. And then bringing it. Sorry if my hand gets in the way. Nice and around. Pulling it nice and tight. And nice and tight. So there we have that. You can see we have a little bit of tail on the end, and you could decide to do more curly cues. You could have this go for days. <laughs> so, but I'm just going to, oops, lose my pegs. <laughs> there we go. Now you can take the pegs out. Sometimes I try to, you know, do it by leaving them in. But if it's easier for you, go ahead and take them out. but I prefer to leave them in, though I pulled this one really tight and it's really holding onto these pegs. So just be mindful, but I don't want to lose my placement. So you can see the way that I have it in line is I'm up one over three. So to place this, I'm going to go up one, one, two, three, over three. Put the back right back on, because that's I don't want to lose these little backs either. I've had this tool for probably 10 years. And I don't use it nearly as much anymore as what I'd like to. There we go. Getting the back on there. So now whenever you've pulled it off, it may look something like this. You can see we have a, quite a bit of separation going. Here comes the dogs. Hey, puppies. <laughs> and you can kind of smush it with your fingers a bit to get everything in place and now from here again use your creativity to make variations but I'm trying to duplicate this so I'm going to come through and make sure that I'm cutting with the flat side of my snips and cut so that the end of the wire that's remaining will be flat and there's the neighbor's music if you can hear that and so you can see on this side it's nice and flat and on this side it has a little pinch happening there. I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. Just reach in, snip. And now is the time to use our nylon jaw pliers to kind of squeeze it down. Getting everything nice and flat. You can see the difference between squeezed and not squeezed. So take it or not squeezed smoosh, squeezing it. And that really brings it down some. And now I've done many pieces where I only surface harden it or work harden it, depending on the term terminology you prefer, with the nylon jaw pliers. And just kind of leave it like that. It makes a really nice just wrapped piece. But we want to explore our different options here. So again, to compare them side by side, we have hammered and not hammered. But again, we're going to try to hammer it. So here we have the five pound anvil. I really don't want my hand and hammer to be in the way, but I don't know if that's, a, I don't know if that can be avoided. And I'm going to go through with my nylon head first. And I'm just going to take it and come on it kind of straight, straight on. And I'm going to start from the center 
and build outward. So you can see already we have some flattening going on where those wires cross over each other. You want to be very careful to not focus your hammering too much on those areas because especially with a very soft aluminum like this, you can actually like just pound right on straight through the wire. So I like to build out from the center because it can have a tendency to spread. and sometimes distort the design. So my goal here is to get it to spread and distort maybe evenly, if that's possible. And so that's it hammered with just the nylon jaw, or the nylon head. But I wanna get some of these really cool spreading effects. Let's see how that happens. Now I'm gonna be chasing it with the uh, brass head kind of outward, away from everything else that's going on in the project. So focusing here on this end. And I really recommend experimenting a bit first to see, um, you know, if you hit it, this one I hit much more all over the surface area. Whereas this one you can see, I kind of focused from here outward. So two very different effects, but good thing I'm not trying to make earrings. <laughs> so let me do the same thing over here. there you can see I focused less central and more on the edge and so now down here I'm going to try to get this to be nice and kind of tapered and pointed a little bit so I'm going to hold it by by the ears kind of <laughs> so you can see how by focusing on that front edge we're able to get the spread but it spread kind of unevenly. The more you do this, the better you'll get at it. You know, practice makes progress. And now if we were using aluminum that had not been anodized, or we don't mind showing a little bit of silver, I can actually come through after doing the spreading with our metal cutters, our wire snips, and trim off some of that spread in an effort to taper this to a point. And that's the thicker gauge wire you go with, the more material you'll have to spread and then to shape. So now, oh, where's it at? I had a metal file somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, you could use a nail file or a metal file just whatever you might or might not have on hand. Here I've got a round one. Flat would have been preferable, but... Because normally what I would do is I would sit the file down and kind of plane this along the, uh, the file just to get it nice and smooth. But you can still get some cool effects with a round file too. The only down part with this is that being anodized aluminum, it now has a silver edge, which could be pretty cool. It gives it a nice flash, but and then just go through, make sure everything is nice and smooth, no sharp edges that are going to bother you when you're wearing it. So there we have our little shaped wire wrap piece, and we can still, I mean, bend it a little bit, but there we are. So different effects. You could go for a more angled look or you could go for a more rounded look. But your creativity here truly is the only limit. And fortunately, aluminum wire is not particularly expensive, so it gives you a lot of room to experiment and don't be afraid to try new and different things. You could then use this as a base. Um, just some different ideas. You could come through, close this join a little bit more, and put a ring through each end, attach it to some like a delicate chain, and hang a bead either inside of it or off the end, or you know, have little chain drapes. Like you could use this as a focal point on a necklace or on earrings. You could have it coming up off of a bracelet for a hand flower. 
um, you could actually shape it around a mandrel, possibly for a ring. Um, you could use multiples together to frame a cabochon. If you had something like that. Oh, I thought I had one right over here. I could show you some different ideas. Well, there's no telling. <laughs> Everything is just a jumbled mess over here right now. Um, but yeah, if you can visualize with me, like, oh, oh the doy here I have. <laughs> you could just frame some different gemstones and things in a lot of different ways so truly I mean I can't reiterate enough that the possibilities are endless you know go wild with it hey y'all I hope that this video was helpful to you if you have any questions comments or ideas please leave them down below if you would like to share pictures of what you've made or um, anything like that you can tag me on Instagram or you can post it to my Facebook wall again links for all of my social media and patreon and different things will be listed down below along with um, the tools and materials used uh, if you enjoy my work and you would like to support what I'm doing um, Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You can also participate in my fairy house giveaways and different things like monthly craft crates and digital download content over on Patreon. But you can also follow those links. Um, we're Amazon affiliates now, Randy and I are. So uh, if you go through and buy stuff through those links, just the same stuff that you would normally get or the tools and materials for the tutorial, that greatly helps out our business. Um, without you having to spend any extra money than what you normally would have, which is, I think, a win-win. So so thank you guys so so much for everything I really appreciate all of the input that you guys give me all of the encouragement and support and everything like that so thank you again so much but um until my next video happy crafting and I'll see y'all around bye <laughs>